to commemorate the centenary of the Pretoria pit disaster, when 344 miners died following an underground explosion just four days before Christmas in 1910. West Horton Local History Group commissioned local artist Andy Smith to create a painting to be hung in the local library. We spoke to Andy as painting was in progress. Uh, when I was doing some research in, in the library, when I first uh, got the commission, I thought I'll go and check out, uh, there's a certain section in there, and uh, the first thing I did was to check out the death certificates. Now I found this one, there's only one example, out of all the people who were killed, there's only one example of a death certificate, and I found that it was a guy who lived in the house that I'm working in now, which took my breath away to be honest because it just made the whole thing so real. Uh, when I first bought this house in uh, 92 I bought it off a of Herbert Lowe and the house had been built by the Lowe family uh, and it had been passed down from one generation to the next. Now all there was in this house when I moved in was a stone sink in the kitchen. That's all there was. There was nothing else, not a stick of furniture, no built-in cupboards, uh, just a couple of fireplaces and a stone sink. And I've still got that stone sink outside because that kind of reminds me, if you like, that it was only 100 years ago, but there was no hot water then. There was no inside toilet. So th uh, the Andrew Lowe, the 23-year-old who was killed, uh, must have got up in the morning, just washed his face in the cold water in December, so in the dark, maybe candlelight, before going out to work and, um, you know, 10 to 8 in the morning, he was underground and along with 343 others, his life was taken away at that moment. I was actually told then by one of Mr Lowe's descendants who lives around the corner of, uh, of a very poignant story of how the body was identified of Andrew. Uh, now his mother, this is Margaret here, uh, went to the pit head three times to try and identify the body and she was unable to do that. Um, so uh, the same night, 21st of December, she was at home, uh, sat by the fire in the kitchen and noticed one odd sock uh, hanging up by the fire uh, that she'd washed, obviously, earlier that day. Um, so then she went back to the pit head and was able to identify Andrew's body just because there was a corresponding odd sock on a body. Uh, one of the things I noticed when I was looking at the pictures from the day of the disaster itself was how there didn't seem to be any great sense of panic. People seemed to be dealing with things in, or certainly by the facial expressions anyway, in a, in a pretty matter-of-fact way. Um, but having said that, um, I just wanted to show the rescue workers with the breathing apparatus and, and you know just the way or just the sense that everybody's just waiting for news they can't really do too much about it they're pretty helpless um, but then of course leading on to this young man here he's uh, the reason for the title of the painting have you seen me dad because uh, someone as young as this young man maybe 14 15 years old maybe uh, actually works at the pit himself in some way um, it just it just seemed to me that someone of his age would sense that fear and I want to try and bring that across without bringing it across on everybody involved in the painting um, yeah, but certainly this young man I think he'd be he'd be more than a little worried about what he was witnessing One of the things I was most keen to show on the painting, uh, to make it resonate really with today's world, was uh, the effect that it had on, on the wider community and, and the immediate family. So, for example, over on the right-hand side of the painting, we've got different generations of someone who was killed. So we've got the wife, uh, the daughter, the sister and the mother. And if you remember, this is the days just before really any, any proper kind of welfare state. So economically um, it would have also been a disaster for for these people so um, you know that was something I was keen to show but also on top of that if you remember that this was only four days before Christmas so these people would have been planning in the next few days to show how much they love and how much they care for someone who was close to them 
and they never got the opportunity to do that. And I think that's something we can all learn from. Um, I think that's something we can all learn from this is 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 the fact that you know love and affection and uh, giving those things is not something we should plan for the future. It's something we should actually do something about today.